was given by the government last month as part of measures to protect cattle from tuberculosis. It's supported by the National Farmers Union. However, opponents claim badgers fleeing the cull could actually spread the disease more widely. Well, the issue is set to be debated in the Commons on Thursday after an online petition received more than 100,000 signatures. Our reporter Alex Ward is live for us this morning at the Wildwood Trust near Hearn Bay, where they're getting quite agitated about this one. Morning, Alex. Good morning, Claire. That's right. Well, uh, badgers are a feature of what people can come and see here at Wildwood. They've actually got a sort of see-through set where you can come and see them in as near as you can to their natural habitat in a sort of um, contrived environment. But it's the badgers in the wild and the plight facing them that, as you say, has really got everybody here quite exercised. And I've got with me Peter Smith, who's the chief executive of the Wildwood Trust here at home. Peter, first of all, why is it that you're supporting this campaign to oppose the cull? What are the issues? Well, it, it's another issue as we see it. I, I mean, I'm a scientist and I, I studied uh, medical biochemistry and population genetics, so I understand a lot of these issues. And what I am incensed about is the terrible way that economic vested interests of large landowners and farmers are using wildlife, badgers, as a scapegoat for their own problems. And this comes time and time again. What Wildwood as a charity campaigns for is wildlife and we're seeing another example where people are making a private profit out of destroying wildlife blaming wildlife the wild in our country for their own problems the problems of bovine TB have got nothing to do with badgers as you said you've got some some scientific insight Mm. because of your background into this what do you think of the evidence which is being put forward by those who want the cull to say that badgers are responsible for the spread of bovine TB? Well, the science by this government and the previous gov- Labour government is mostly terrible science. I mean, if I wrote that in a scientific paper when I was a scientist, it would have been laughed out of a journal. The King Report was a travesty of science. The man should be so embarrassed that he ever wrote such a contrived load of rubbish. And the Krebs Report was a quite a good report scientifically but still there was a bunch of inferences it wasn't a proper blind trial it was not a really scientific trial and they could only infer results there's no evidence so there's no evidence that links badgers giving tb to cows and there's ev- lots of evidence saying that cows give tb to cows and the problem we've got is we've got to stop cows transferring TB to other cows but that's going to hit on landowners and farmers pockets and they don't want to do it they want the government to pay for it we can hear how passionately you feel about this how surprised have you been though by the strength of feeling a hundred thousand signatures on this petition which has led to the debate what do you think of the public response to this campaign well obviously badgers are cute and people love them and it's great that badgers have got so many supporters and I'm so glad the British public have come out you know one of the biggest responses ever it's certainly the fastest biggest response to the the e-petition system and i'm glad so many mps are supporting us and i've got every faith that the badger cull is going to stop but that's not the critical issue for me finally and briefly what do you think then is the solution if culling badgers isn't going to fix this problem what do you think they should be doing well the solution's both economic and it's scientific the scientific um, problem says we need to quarantine cow movements like we used to do and the economic argument is instead of government taxpayers money being given to the worst farmers people who call you know use criminal activity to mask tb and cows to people who don't look after their cows intensive farming production that they, they are rewarded by government subsidy we need to change to a an insurance system whereby good farmers are rewarded and poor farmers are punished well, lost to two over there. That's uh, Peter Smith, the Chief Executive of the Wildwood Trust at Herm Bay, with our reporter Alex Ward. Uh, those There are other people on the other side of the argument say badger culling is essential. One of them is Andrew Prail, President of the British Cattle Veterinary Association. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm sure you heard Peter's uh, very articulate arguments there. He basically says uh, the science it, it doesn't hold up for this. It isn't badgers that give, give cattle TB. It's cattle that give cattle TB. 
Um, I'm afraid, Claire, that uh, Mr. Smith really um, is detracting from the argument to a certain extent. If there is science, it, is, it gives profound evidence that, in fact, badgers and cattle are both involved as far as TB is concerned. And we're talking primarily about the endemic areas, the areas where in the west of England the big swathe of land around there, and, and, and interesting, a small nidus of infection in East Sussex as well. Um, now, in those particular areas where the, the disease is endemic, there is very strong evidence to suggest, and from the Krebs report itself, which evidenced um, that, that both badgers and cattle are involved. In fact, um, John Krebs uh, suggested that there's compelling evidence to suggest that uh, badgers were uh, and a significant source of um, BTB for, for cattle. How significant, it, though? That's the question, isn't it, really? Do we categorically know that they are the main carriers and they are the no, main no, reason the main cattle carriers. get bovine in, TB? In fact, in um, further analysis of that report, there's a statement has been made that in some uh, some of these areas where the disease is endemic, um, you are looking probably at about a, a 50-50 um, source of infection. I mean, what we're talking about here is not about eradicating badgers. We're, we're, it's a very regrettable but absolutely necessary decision that the government has taken here. And we're also looking about pilot areas. We're looking at pilot areas to see if we can effectively control the numbers of badgers in those particular areas um, within very um, stringent um, uh, licensing requirements, we're not going to see a response with, uh, with regard to the amount of TB in cattle in the short term. This is a long, slow disease. But why blame it all on the badgers? That's we're what not, he was saying. We, we, he was we, saying we, the badgers are being scapegoated. Yeah. Wildlife is being scapegoated here. He's no. saying, you know, what you need to do is put the responsibility back on the farmers. Would you at least agree There's that maybe been, quarantining no. cows and, and maybe yeah. instead of, he says, the onus being on the taxpayer to sort of, to financially sort this problem out with with, with culls and the like, um, it should basically be on farmers. It should be, you know, you take out the insurance policies, put the onus back on you and, and, and introduce more responsible but the very, farming. The very, very, the very stringent testing requirements which take place in cattle all over the country to a variable extent depending on how much TB is involved. But in, in the areas we're talking about, um, all areas, are, all cattle herds are tested on at least an annual basis to see if there is um, evidence of TB there. And we're looking at an enormous number of cattle that have been culled. For instance, in 2010, in England and Wales, we were looking at 32,000 or more cattle were culled with evidence of TB. There are very strict movement controls in place, limiting the ability of farmers to move cattle from infected herds, um, even inside the endemic area. Um, the, uh, the the regulation is very strict and, and for the most part they're very strongly adhered to. Well let's go quickly back to Peter Smith, the Chief Executive of the Wildwood Trust at home base, still in our radio car. Uh, Peter Smith, you heard Andrew Prail there say uh, farmers are being uh, responsible there are strict codes and movements that, that they do adhere to uh, they're not scapegoating the badges they have to get on top of this problem um, We've got the worst cattle uh, quarantine regulations um, in the whole of Europe, many parts of the world have got far better. The reason why we've got TB is because we relaxed our uh, restrictions 30, 40 years ago. We stopped so, just so you know farmers could make more money, and we've now got the problem we've got. It's time that farmers need to man up, take responsibility for the actions they've caused, all the profits they've made over the last 40 years, and get on top of this disease. Stop blaming the badger. Man up actually take responsibility for the problems they're causing themselves. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Peter Smith, the Chief Executive of the Wildwood Trust at Herne Bay. Uh, we